Calvin Castine, located just across Route 11 from Dick's Country Store and Music Oasis and Gun Shop and whatever else Dick Decost sells there in his Route 11 uh, store. A very appropriate windy day in the North Country. We're in the town of Clinton, commonly referred to as Cherubusco. And we are here for groundbreaking ceremonies for the Noble Power Project wind farm in the town of Clinton and the town of Ellenburg. The first of what will be several wind farm locations and uh, we're here on this Saturday morning to uh, witness the goings on. So stick around and we think you'll find all this very interesting here on Hometown Cable. We're a few minutes past the scheduled 11 o'clock start. Vehicles are still arriving after the ceremonies here. There's the annual, from what I've been told, it might be the third annual uh, homeowners picnic. Uh, people involved with uh, with Noble in their partnership. They're the ones that were uh, putting uh, wind turbines on their property. We'll be uh, having a picnic here with the officials from Noble. This uh, location, uh, anybody who's been to the Orville Gibson party that uh, Dick B. Koss has had in the past is the site of that. Uh, there have been many of those types of functions here on this this land across from uh, Richard D. Cost's uh, country store. And very appropriately today, it's very, very windy.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem sung by Portland Wood. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so Uh, both here 
in the field. And uh, I guess uh, the construction team, um, your time is, has arrived. So uh, we're expecting uh, great things from you too. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it at that and kind of get back to, uh, to the communities here. I just can't tell you uh, how we appreciate the support we've received from our landowners and, and the local towns. And I hope people uh, have a good time here today. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, there are five other people here uh, today who will speak uh, to you. I'm going to introduce them in, in, in batches. First, a um, uh, group of people who know these projects so well now and who will work so hard with us. Uh, Michael Fillion, who's the supervisor of the town of Clinton, and Mike Neal, who's a supervisor in Elmberg, and Dan Spitzer of the firm Hudson and Ross, who represented uh, both these towns uh, on the legal side of things. So, uh, without further ado, Mike, can you step up to the podium, please? I want to suggest to you 
that we don't have money problems in this state, we don't have money problems in this country. What we need is more leadership. And what you're looking at today is an act of leadership. To take charge, to solve problems, to have the will to say we're going to get things done with the community making the decision whether it will happen or not and how it will happen. Even as we speak, there are gentlemen who run the state who is not related to me is proposing legislation that would preempt local control over, uh, over power facilities and take away a lot of your other home rule powers as a result of that. Senator Little has been involved in those negotiations. She and uh, Assemblywoman Dupree have been fighting to maintain your own home rule powers. They're essential to the kind of economic development. With due respect to our representatives from downstate, when was the last time anybody said, gee, we got a problem, let's go to Albany for help? Uh, it just doesn't work that way. That's not where the solutions are. The solutions are local. And this kind of leadership, when somebody says, act, think globally and act locally, this is what they're talking about. This community took a, a really hard look, and the folks from Noble can tell you, it was by no means a, a pass-through or a rubber stamp, and I'm very proud of the way they, they handle themselves. As this is an example of whatever issues that we face, we can together solve them. I am greatly honored to be here and to be part of this with you. I'm looking forward to working with you for years to come on similar projects. I thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Dan. Okay, we also have um, Paul Maroon is here today representing Senator Little. Uh, Paul, uh, can you come to the podium, please? Thank you, and good morning, friends all. Senator Little can't be here today. She's with her daughter traveling, but she wanted me to come up and say a few words. And she wanted me to say thank you to Noble. And you know, you may say why. Well, let's say thank you from the school districts for the money. Let's say thank you to local government, many of the officials are here for the money. Let's say thank you to the jobs that are going to be created. And you know, over the years I've worked with some of the people from Noble, we've had some issues. And you know, we can put men on the moon and women on the moon and the space station and bring them back. We can solve the issues with labor and with some of the issues that some of the people in local government have. Now, let me just tell you one quick story. I was in Italy for the last three weeks with the Naval Reserve. And over there, they have a different view about America. They say, Commander, why are you people wasting all of this energy with those big cars and biofuels and not trying to go on your own? Well, here in the North Country, right here in Clinton County, we are doing what people across the nation and the world are trying to do. Free ourselves with something that is blowing right through these open doors today, wind to create energy so that we are reducing our, our dependency on the foreign nations that are working against us. So I want to say thank you to Noble for uh, working with us. And as you know, my other hat is a legislator in Franklin County. And we're working with Noble to move a bit westward from here. And I look forward to seeing them over there. Thank you all and thank you, Noble. Tom Gray is the Director of Communications for the American Wind Energy Association. Tom is here. Thanks very much. I'm very pleased to be here today on behalf of the American Wind Energy Association and to congratulate you all and Noble Environmental Power on the groundbreaking for these wind parks. Uh, I've worked for the American Wind Energy Association since 1980. And in many ways, this uh, ceremony is the kind of event that we used to dream about back then. A major developer beginning construction on major wind projects in one of the many parts of the U.S. that we knew even then had good wind potential. So I'm delighted to be here and be a part of it. I can give you some numbers. Uh, you've probably heard some of them about how many New York households these uh, wind parks can power, how many megawatts, how many millions of kilowatt hours. Uh, those are all important, but the real story of wind power today is what it is doing here and in both rural and industrial areas around America. It's not just powering our homes, it's beginning to help power our economy. Across the U.S., 
rural towns and cities have lost economic ground because of the decline of reliable uh, industries that used to be there, like railroad and steel. And now we are seeing some of those towns and cities uh, begin to make a comeback thanks to wind power. Our industry is growing at the rate of nearly 30% a year, and the manufacturing and services that provide the foundation for it have to keep up. I might just add here that our association has more than quintupled in size in the past six years. It's gone from 200 companies in 2001 to more than 1,100 today. Uh, what we are seeing across the U.S. is that wind power is a, already becoming a powerful engine for new jobs. And these jobs are usually in manufacturing, a sector from which our country's steadily been losing jobs over the past generation. Let me give you just one example. Uh, Fairless Hill, Pennsylvania. It's the former home of a 2,500-acre U.S. steel site that used to have 7,000 workers. Uh, the employment there started going downhill in 1982, and steady downsizing followed through the years until only 100 employees were left in 2001. In 2006, Spanish wind turbine manufacturer Gamesa Corporation started planting roots there. They built three new uh, brand new facilities on 20 acres of the old U.S. steel site. These facilities are going to produce wind turbine, uh, wind turbines, uh, blades, and assemble the cells. Putting out, they put over 34 million into the plant and they'll employ over 300 workers. Uh, that's in addition to another 230 they're already providing at another facility in Cambria County in the western part of Pennsylvania. The other issue I'd like to, to briefly address is uh, energy security and just say, uh, you know where our oil comes from, uh, a lot of it comes from overseas, from all around the world. Uh, today we're revving up to build a similar kind of industry to import natural gas from everywhere to the U.S. because we're running out here in North America. One of the big things that wind energy does is it typically saves the natural gas. If, if the wind's blowing, if the wind turbines are generating, natural gas is what is not being used to uh, generate electricity. And that helps to keep the price of gas both for electricity and for home heating down. Um, if, you follow, if you know that market, if you, you look at it, uh, you find the, the price has tripled over the past, three, uh, past five or six years. If it hadn't been for even a little bit of wind energy we have in this country today, it'd be even worse. So that's another major contribution to our economy. Uh, we've looked at what, in, in just the past few months, we looked at what it will take to uh, make uh, for wind energy to generate 25, 20% uh, 20 of our electricity within the next 25 years. And to do that, I've run some of the numbers on the back of an envelope, and it turns out that at the end of that time, our industry is going to be about a third the size of the, what the auto industry is in the U.S. So it's going to be a big industry. It's going to be one of the largest new manufacturing industries in, in this uh, 21st century. So thank you all for, for being here. Help make some of our dreams a, a reality. Thanks a lot. Okay, so to give you a clue as to how we're doing on the agenda, I'm on page four of seven and a half pages, so we're going quite well. Okay, we would like now to present the oh, five Nobel Scholars with their scholarship awards. Uh, this is a, a, a really good uh, thing that we enjoy doing a lot, and it's your and Ali Finley have uh, been working on this. We have five Nobel Scholars this year each. The recipient of a $2,000 uh, assistance scholarship from those. I'd like the five scholars to step up here, please. Uh, Danielle McNeil. Danielle here. Okay, Danielle will attend Clinton Community College. She'll be doing business administration. Come on up on the podium. Lyndon LeBombard, attending Paul Smith College, majoring in surveying. Zachary Lashway, going to SUNY Plattsburgh, majoring in communications. Joshua Coombs will attend City Plattsburgh, also majoring in Business and Corporate Law. And finally, Benjamin Sterner, who will attend City Plattsburgh, Business Management. Congratulations to all of you. Chuck's going to present you with your, your awards.
many of you know, we also ran an art competition, uh, and there is one grand prize winner, Ron Stermer, 12th grade in, in Northern Ireland Robert School District. Uh, is Ron here? Okay, well, Ron, Ron was the grand prize winner, and then we had two first place winners uh, from the high school category and one from the middle school. Are they, are they here? Oh, here's Ron, okay. are mandatory for this type of photo op. Slightly afternoon on this June 22nd, 2007. Howard Jennings taking the official photo. One, two, three. 
to shove a bird. I say three, shove a One, two, three. calluses some of these guys have had. <laughs> okay. Now, we have uh, a couple of time capsules here on, on the podium for Mike and for Jim McNeil to, to keep in the town hall. They're the, the churns that you see here. So maybe maybe Liz, will you present these these time capsules to Mike and to, to, to Jim McNeil? Uh, presenting the time capsules. So I'll go over and shake hands. Gentlemen. Is one for Edinburgh and one for Clinton or are they kind of interchangeable? I don't really know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so take a picture. A milk can time capsule. And uh, the milk train used to come through Cherubusco. Cherubusco was the highest. Station on the Rutland Railroad, the Northern Railroad. It was slow incline up and a slow incline down, and uh, a lot of milk it came through Cherubusco and Irona and Champlain and uh, places in between. Okay, so I'm in, in continuing the theme of recognition. Uh, there, there's one other. Um, person or company that I'd like to recognize before before we close. Uh, Nate Race and Brian Hughes were here. I hope they're still here. Uh, these guys, you know, we found we found help here locally. We found Ed and we found Hughes and Stewart. Uh, thank you for all the work you did. It was a, a tremendous effort and it is truly appreciated by Noble and indeed by all the people who worked with you. You know, we heard so much, you know, about, about how well and how, how happy they were to work with you. So I also would like to recognize Hughes and Stewart today. And the last item is uh, the Color Guard recessional, and uh, we'll finish with, with the Chateaugay troop. Thank you. to Noble for putting this event on last year and again this year, and Allison Finley for all the work she's organized all this. So let's give them all a great big hand.
So uh, I had a little, a little senior moment there. I forgot something. Uh, there is a donation jar uh, at the back for uh, a, a victim of an a motor accident, an unfortunate victim, Kevin King. Uh, for those of you who, who uh, feel you'd like to make a donation, the jar is in the back here. So uh, please, uh, you know, dig. I think that's it. Is it? Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs>